Removing honey from a beehive can be a tough job. Bees are extremely protective of their colony and will attack, but bee stings are just part of a beekeeper's job. I average probably anywhere from 10 to 15 a day. Uh, reason being is we don't wear gloves. Um, I was about 13 when my gloves finally came off. My grandpa told me enough was enough, took them off. It was time for me to get used to getting stung. Um, the reason why we don't wear gloves is the fear if we run into any disease in our hive, we're afraid that just pure washing our gloves is not enough to carry the disease from one hive to another. When we do have it, we do have soap and water in the truck. We can thoroughly scrub, wash our hands clean, and then start fresh on the next hive. So that's pretty much the main reason why we don't wear gloves. The way the stinger works is it doesn't start until the bee, she puts the stinger in, she'll die within an hour after she stings you. What you do is you don't pull the stinger out, you flip it. And then if you can put honey on it or bacon soda with water or something like that. The process of removing honey from those hives, uh, we usually have them four stories high. And the first two, we don't take honey off. They're called brood, B-R-O-O-D, brood chambers, because that's what you call the little babies. The first two boxes are for the bees. The third and fourth box is ours, it's honey. And we trick the bees a lot. Uh, bees naturally just make as much honey as they can. And as they fill the boxes, we take them off and put empty ones on. So we love to see them continually fill the boxes and we take the honey off. That's what it's about. See where the point of my hook is? Right there. That's pollen inside that. This is pollen right here. This is pollen right here. This is, this is all what we call bee bread. This is pollen and, and honey together right there. The, the use of smoke is used to sedate, to calm the bees. And uh, sometimes if you put too much on, they'll fill their honey sack like they're gonna have to leave because maybe the hive is in danger. We just use a little smoke, and, and, but it just calms them. Once the honey is collected, it's ready to be removed from the comb. It's quite a sticky situation, but it's a necessary step in getting the honey out to you, the consumer. The honey house located here where we're at now has been here since 52. The way we extract the honey, we still do it what they call me ancient times or old times. Nothing has changed there. Only one machine, brand new machine was bought and it was 20 years ago. First things first, when we started was the uncapper, which is the one thing, one brand new thing we bought 20 years ago. It's simple, it's like a conveyor belt, you lay the frame flat. Basically what it does is it, it, it's like a knife. It cuts the wax that is covering the honey inside the frame. Once it comes out to the other end, we have someone else, it will set the, the frame onto a box where my, my father will clean uh, any excess wax or any uncapped wax. 16 frames is what fits in the next machine, which is the honey extractor. Basically, you, we, put it in, we put them in and all space in one direction, we spin it. Runs about 20, 25 miles per hour with pure centrifugal force. It shoots the honey out of the one side of the frame against the wall of the extractor. With the gear on top, you can turn it one way and it'll turn those baskets the other way around and it'll shoot the honey out of the other side of the frame that wasn't shot out. Then when it's ready, you'll pick up the lever, which is the clutch, and then you can put the brake on and it'll stop the capper. Basically, as you see, the frame coming out are empty and they're ready to go back into fill the next day. From there, any honey inside the, the extractor go, drips down the side into the pipe into what we call our clear fire. It's like a humidifier. Basically what it does, that thing is nice and, nice and hot. It's a pan within a pan. In, in the inner pan, it's got warm to hot water, no hotter than 100 degrees. Anything after that, it boils the honey. And then on the pan on top, it's just a pure honey. And what it does, it warms and keeps that honey hot and it helps evaporate any moisture. The honey and water don't mix. It, it would spoil. So we make sure we evaporate it so that nothing but warm honey is coming into our tanks. Then from there, once we're done, we got a three to 400 gallon tank that's sitting in the bottom. Once we're done extracting, then once we're free and clean, we'll come down, start the pump. We do sell it wholesale, 55 gallon drums, uh, or we do sell it red tail, anywhere from half pound to gallons, two gallons, depending on what the customer prefers. This blend of honey is, is it's a mix of cotton. It's got some purple sage, the purple sage is starting to bloom. And we do have wildflower, all the yellow flowers you see blooming outside, thanks to, again, thanks to Mother Nature with the rain. So it's a mix of everything. 
depending on the type of uh, type and color flower, type of year will, will determine the color of the honey. We don't cook it, we don't do anything to it. All we do is extract it. And so when you don't filter it, you still got the pollen and the nectar and pieces of wax. You know, when you when you go to a store, like you know, any any grocery store, they can say 100 percent pure honey, but they can add corn syrup, up to 66% corn syrup, okay? And it can still say on the label, 100% pure honey. I don't know how they get away with it, I really don't understand, but when you deal with a store and you're buying corn syrup, you might as well go to the aisle that sells corn syrup. If you have a, a, a solid product that you believe in and you can make a pitch to people, they love it. They just love it. They want to taste nature. For centuries, people have been using honey for its soothing qualities. We use it in hot tea for a sore throat or in lotion for dry skin. Honey, wax, and pollen can be found in so many different products. We use uh, the whole range of what the bees make. We use the propolis. We use that because it's full of uh, enzymes, amino acids, a lot of the B vitamins and C vitamins. We also use the bees wax, that's used in anything that's needed to seal moisture in. The reason being is honey is a natural humectant. It actually draws moisture from the air and moisturizes the skin. So we use um, those products extensively in lip balms, we use them in lotions, we use them in cleansers, exfoliants. Royal jelly is like the mecca of honey. It's also used in skincare preparations because it fights the free radicals or the antioxidants. It has an antioxidant effect. Well, we have three products right now. One is a honey and argon oil uh, mask. And then we also have a honey and buttermilk cleanser. And then we also have the lip balm that we use that has the honey and the propolis in it. We do have um, something that you can do at home. Two things, actually. Number one, for a cleanser, you can take just about two tablespoons of buttermilk, two tablespoons of honey, and actually clean the face with that. The honey is a natural cleanser and moisturizer. And then you can follow that with an exfoliation by taking just uh, two tablespoons of very finely ground almonds and a tablespoon of honey and a half a teaspoon of lemon and then mix that and use that in circular motions all over the face and into the decollete area for a complete exfoliation. Honey is a natural sweetener. It can be used in baked goods or our favorite savory dishes. However it's used, it's guaranteed to add the perfect touch of sweetness. Well, today we're gonna make an avocado and strawberry vinaigrette. And this is made with honey and we're gonna add pistachios to the mix as well. First off, we take an avocado and we're gonna slice it. So then we would take the avocados and we would put them on a dish like this. Set that aside and then we take strawberries and do the same thing. We've removed the tops, cut the strawberry in half, and then we make slices. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to make the vinaigrette dressing. And with that, what we need is we need uh, two and a half tablespoons of lemon juice. The next step is we're going to add three tablespoons of olive oil and we're going to add to that three tablespoons of honey. Okay, we've added our three tablespoons of honey, and to that we're going to add an eighth a teaspoon of salt, and that's uh, sea salt, and an eighth a teaspoon of pepper. And I've already measured that out, so we'll put that in there. So that's all we have to the ingredients. And I'm going to take a whisk, I'm going to take this whisk here, and just whisk it up really well, beat it up around. Make sure you get all the honey mixed in there really well. We take our avocado slices and we arrange them on the plate a little bit here. Put a few strawberries on here as well. So now we have the strawberries and avocado on the plate. 
and we can add some of the Brini grit to this mix. We'll just spoon some of this on here, drizzle to the top. All you have to do is drizzle a little bit on the top, so that looks really good to eat. And then we're going to add a little bit of pistachios to this as well, just to give it that little bit of crunch. And there you go, we have a quick and easy salad. Many people use honey as an alternative to what most people know as table sugar, the white sugar that you typically have. I, I particularly like it in adding a little bit with like Dijon mustard and using it as a kind of a thick starter to what I'm, what I'm making. And then I'll add a little bit of olive oil and mix everything up. People don't realize how many uses it has for it. I mean, I made honey ice cream about six weeks ago. It was unbelievable. I mean, I use it for saute and steaks. I do saute and all my vegetables in it. It's just way too much fun. Uh, it's sweet and I love it. <laughs> It's easy for us to open up a cabinet and grab a bottle of honey, but because of the hardworking bees and beekeepers, we can enjoy its simple sweetness anytime. If they're, if they're not making any honey, uh, it's, it's, you do get frustrated. I just look at it as a challenge. I wasn't knowledgeable enough on the science behind the bees. And with that, knowing that now has helped me a lot, understand them a lot more than I thought I did. It turned from a hobby to an uncontrollable business. I love beekeeping, I teach it and uh, it's one of my passions in life. It, it's part of nature, you know? If we don't have honey bees, we don't have anything, you know? Everything is tied to that honey bee. And if you enjoy their nectar too, then you're enjoying life, I think. From the flower to the hive, bottle, and your home, honey can add a little extra sweetness to your life. Field Trip was made possible by the Cooperative Extension Service at New Mexico State University and by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. If you would like to purchase a copy of this program, please visit krwg.org.